on my face. I got a humongous tattoo that says crybaby and shit to keep me grateful and remind me not to be a crybaby so I see it every time I look in the mirror, you know? Little Peep was one of those few rappers who made it big in no time. He is usually given credit for bringing emo rap into the 2010s. He was on the brink of bursting into global stardom. Little Peep had everything – talent, a loyal fan base, and even looks that could make any pop star envy him. But there was also another side of him that had everything dark from drugs to depression. Hello everyone and welcome to True Celebrity Stories. Were you also heartbroken to learn about the fatal overdose that took Little Peep's life? Today, we will discuss what exactly happened on that road tour which was cut short due to his sudden demise. Before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, and share. Also subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll never miss any updates. Early Life and Influences Little Peep was born Gustav Elijah R. on November 1, 1996. His parents were Harvard graduates who separated when he was very young. They officially got divorced when he was 14 and that affected him tremendously as he didn't have a good relationship with his father. Gustav's mother brought him up as a single parent on Long Island. His neighborhood also played an important role in developing his character as he truly felt the boundary between rich and poor when he went to school. Although he was good in his studies, he had a hard time adjusting in the school environment. He felt that the kids at school were mean and didn't have any friends to share his struggle with. His mother said in an interview after his death, Gus got fed up with that world, he rejected it, and he rejected being molded into a box. When he locked himself in the garage and got his first tattoo, he began to make his rejection of the boxing public. During this time, he found solace in music and decided to pursue a career as a musician. He was a huge Kurt Cobain fan and as mind-blowing as it was, this is what many publications called him after his first critical success. Pete Wentz from the Fallout Boys said, He had this vulnerability to him, in the same way that Kurt did. He unapologetically traversed genres in a weird way that my generation and generations older than me probably would have been too cautious about. Underground Success Little Peep started his rebellion by getting face tattoos so he wouldn't have a choice but to make it as a rapper. He wanted to be known as someone who doesn't fit in. He started releasing music online by the pseudonym Trap Goose. He released his first mixtape, Little Peep Part 1, which got played 4,000 times in its first week. Then soon, he released his first extended play, Feels, and another mixtape, Live Forever. He made some friends online who then advised him to come to LA. He went and met goth boy Clique. After meeting with the guys, he started associating himself with them and then released his first full-length mixtape, Crybaby. After the surprise success of his mixtapes, he decided to release his album, Hellboy. His songs were getting millions of streams when he released Hellboy, and in no time, it exploded. It gained both critical and commercial success. Unlike many rappers who glorify drugs, Gus talked about the real side of it. He even hinted about his own condition in lyrics like, I used to want to kill myself, came up, still want to kill myself, my life is going nowhere, I want everyone to know that I don't care. Despite its simplicity, his songs were not shallow, they were deeply personal. He didn't even try to hide what he was feeling. Another example of his countless such lyrics are, Maybe I won't die young and I'll be happy. What is happy? I always have happiness for like 10 seconds and then it's gone. I'm getting so tired of this. If only people had dissected his songs as they do with Taylor Swift, Little Peep might have gotten the help he so badly needed. Battle with depression and drugs In the world of hip-hop, drugs are only used to glorify the level of wildness. No real effects are shown when rappers flaunt this lifestyle. Little Peep's lyrics were mostly about drugs, but he never once lied about them being good. In fact, as much as he was addicted, he always used to say not to take them to everyone else. In his interview with GQ, he, for the first time, opened up about battling multiple mental illnesses. Yeah, it is serious. I suffer from depression. And some days I wake up and I'm like, fuck, I wish I didn't wake up. That was part of why I moved to California. Trying to get away from the place that was doing that to me and the people I was around. I realized it was just myself. It's a chemical imbalance in my brain. Some days I'll be very down and out, but you won't be able to tell really because I don't express that side of myself on social media. That's the side of myself that I express through music. That's my channel for letting all that shit out. In one such interview, he also revealed that he was suffering from bipolar disorder. He was young with unmatched potential, but his demons were also not like others. 
Fans saw themselves in the young boy who was going through so much and still wrote something that connected with them. People used to come to meet him backstage and they would often end up sharing their traumas with him. One of the things he genuinely loved in this field was how people would tell him that his song saved their life. They tell me that it saved their lives. They say that I stopped them from committing suicide, which is a beautiful thing. It's great for me to hear. It helps. It boosts me because music saved my life as well. Gus loved being a savior to others, but there was no one who could understand his troubles. He never lied about his worsening depression every time he was asked about it. His response was, things just get worse. Things already get worse and worse and worse every day. Beef with XXX Tentacion. Little Peep's career was extremely short but quite influential. He was an artist with a vision. The rap industry is notorious for not being good to women. The sexism and misogynist mindset has been an issue for too long. Surprisingly, not many rappers even acknowledge it as an issue, but Gus wasn't like many rappers. He had no patience for anyone who treated women badly. When he was becoming famous, there was another name who was also gaining an immense fan following on SoundCloud. XXX Tentacion had a history of abusing women, and Little Peep did everything in his power to not be associated with him. He even spent money to remove his songs from his playlist. It was a well-known fact that the only reason Gus despised XXX Tentacion so much was his troubling history with women. After he passed, a fellow rapper talked about his influence in the genre. Sadly, Peep had barely just begun bringing emo into the future with a message that many of his less women-friendly influences like Brand New had failed to put forward. For a crybaby who left this world so young, Peep inspired a lot of people to keep going. A fashion icon. Gus was not a regular guy. His creativity was also reflected in the way he styled. Going against the norm was in his blood. John Womack, economist and historian of Latin American liberation movements, was his maternal grandfather. It was a part of his upbringing to be doubtful of the authorities. When he grew up, he used to call himself a loner. The only way he used to find solace was in doing something that would either connect with people or shock people. His music was for the emotions and feels, but his fashion was purely about the shock factor. He told the magazine why his style cannot be put under one single category. I never dress the same way for a week. I'll dress like a whole other person the next week. I like to get weird and mix things. Not necessarily draw on the streets, but mix darker, dirtier cultures with high class shit. Kind of fuse them together and see how they can become one. And I think that already happens when I put on any really elegant piece of clothing. Because of the way I look, you expect me to dress like a fucking punk. The Untimely Demise on November 15, 2017, the world got the heartbreaking news of Little Peep dying from an accidental drug overdose. His managers went to wake him up at 8.45 p.m. right before his show in Arizona. But when they looked at him, his pale skin and blue lips were enough for them to guess. They immediately called the ambulance, but when they came, they pronounced him dead on the scene. Soon, the news broke out and his fans went crazy to get one last look at him. Later, the autopsy revealed his Xanax was heavily coated with fentanyl, which is an extremely dangerous drug. Even a little quantity of it can end up killing a person, and it was found in huge quantity in Gus's body. Later, his mother sued his managers for knowing about his drug addiction and still providing him with extremely dangerous drugs on a regular basis. Some other members of his team also talked about Belinda, his manager, who provided him with drugs quite a few times. The drug that seemed to be popular with Gus and Belinda was ketamine. When I'd see Gus on ketamine, it was alarming because it really wiped him out, made him non-functioning, and I'd known it was Belinda who got it for him at least once. Later, Belinda hired a lawyer and denied all the allegations. Her lawyer said she didn't provide him a drug that day, and neither was she involved in any substance abuse activity prior to that. The case is still in court, and many people have since then tried to solve it. Guessing from his lyrics, some think that it was a suicide, while others believe it was just an unfortunate overdose. But one thing everyone can agree on is that Little Peep was a star who was about to shine his brightest. And since he has gone, the number of his fans has only increased who are now understanding the depth behind his lyrics. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button to get the notifications. Also, don't forget to watch other videos on this channel that explore more topics like this. Stay safe, everyone.